Hey guys, what's up? It's Circuit Two Square, and today this is gonna be my first official mock draft on the YouTube. Uh, I'm doing this on the date of January 11th, 2019. Uh, this is right before the divisional round, so everything isn't quite up to date. But I'll be doing this um, this mock draft in three parts. The first episode will have one through ten. The second will have eleven through twenty-one, and the last part will have twenty-two to thirty-two. It'll be coming out Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So I will not have official draft orders for the second half of this but what what I can do right now is the best so we're gonna go into the first pick right now and it is the Arizona Cardinals and the Arizona Cardinals will take Nick Bosa Nick Bosa is an edge rusher from Ohio State he is one of the best edge rusher he no he is the best edge rusher in this class he's the best pass rusher run stuffer he can do all that the injury does scare me a little bit in the sense that is he really gonna be ready for the combine he probably will be but you never know and Arizona really needs that dominant pass rusher since Chandler Jones is getting a little older in the tooth they do need that the dominant guy on defense and um and they do have a new dc it is um uh vance joseph so i think bosa could probably either play standing up edge rusher or hand in the ground like his brother in his first year in uh the charter system he did play with his hand down in a three four system i think that go really well with him oh yeah on to the second pick uh that pick is owned by the san francisco 49ers and that pick will be josh allen the edge rusher from kentucky allen is a excellent not an excellent pass rusher. He's a good pass rusher, good run server. He can do that in the linebacker position. He can do that in edge. I think he's more fit for a 3-4 scheme where he is on the line and able to just get after the passer. Not really a hand in the ground play that edge really well from the line position. But San Francisco has to take him. I think there might be a change because Josh Allen, if the Arizona Cardinals do go to a 3-4, they might think Allen is better. And that's crazy to think. Nick Bosa isn't going to go number one overall. Number three is the New York Jets, and they're going to take Quinnen Williams from Alabama. Yes, the Jets need edge pressure. They need edge help. They need offensive lineman help. I really don't want them to take uh, Jonah Williams from Alabama. I think they can get a good guy in the second round. They go get Quinnen Williams here. It's the same thing that happened with Leonard Williams from USC. He might get traded this offseason. We never know, but if it's going to be Leonard Williams on one side, Henry Anderson on the other, and then Quinnen Williams playing the nose, that is actually scary. That is really scary for the AFC East. And if they get him, I wouldn't be surprised if they're a top half of the league in the, in the front seven because they're so good up front. And I guess this is a new head coach, so he might want to bring a new blood there. Maybe trade Leonard Williams away, and Quinn Williams could be the good pick there. On number four, number four is the Las Vegas Raiders pick. That is their original pick, and they pick Lillian Farrell from Clemson, your national champion. Uh, Farrell is an edge rusher, and I think they need to really replace Khalil Mack, which they never should have in the first place, but you know what? Whatever. Clem Farrell is a good pass rusher. He's a great run stuffer. I think he can do all that what Khalil Mack could have done. Not at the same level, but he can give the same production as Khalil Mack did for the Oakland Raiders. Number five, Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Jonah Williams. Tampa Bay just brought in a new head coach, Bruce Arians. He says that James Winston is the key. He says he is the quarterback that can win them a Super Bowl. Not, not in those exact words, but he's a winning quarterback. He thinks he's a winning quarterback. And and when you, when you have a winning quarterback, you have to surround him with good talent. And they haven't done that at the offensive line, especially at the tackle position. You have Demir Dotson. He's been okay. He's a little shaky this season. But you have Donovan Smith. He isn't the greatest. He gets beat by speed rushers. And so that's why you take Jonah Williams here. Jonah Williams is a good pass blocker. He's an excellent run blocker. He can do all of that and help Winston. And then maybe later in his career, you move him to guard or maybe center. I don't know. But Jonah Williams is the pick there to help out Jameis Winston. Number six, the New York Giants take Dwayne Haskins. The quarterback from Ohio State. The Giants go Dwayne Haskins here because they really need a guy for the future after Eli Manning retires. He's probably going to have one more season, the 2019-2020 season. And then I see Haskins maybe. I don't know if the Giants are gonna really going to make a Super Bowl run, but maybe Haskins starts somewhere in the middle of the year. I think he's a good quarterback, but I think he needs to develop a little bit on his pocket awareness, his roles. I think Eli can teach him some of that, but also teach him to be a leader, teach him to really be the guy. And Eli I was the guy for a few years, so I think Giants fans, I'm not taking Kyler Murray here. He's too short. I just he's he's unproven. But uh he had one good year at Oklahoma and 
can he replicate that in the NFL? He's going against big 12 defenses. They suck. Number seven, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars taking Kyler Murray from Oklahoma. Yes, I have them taking the Heisman Trophy winner. It, they need a quarterback. They might go for a journeyman like Joe Flacco. They, it's a really a win now scenario because most of their defenders are fairly young, but they're going to have to pay some young talent like Jalen Ramsey. They're going to have to pay him soon. Maybe even this year. They really need to bring in a quarterback that on an affordable dinner. And Kyler Murray, he's unproven, but maybe he has that magic touch. Maybe that rookie luck that some rookies for quarterbacks have, like Baker Mayfield. Um, Baker Mayfield was like Lamar. Maybe Lamar Jackson. We can say that. Murray might be as fast as Lamar. I think he has the same, he, he kind of has the same arm, but we'll see when that time comes when Murray actually hits the NFL. Uh, number eight, the Detroit Lions take Greedy Williams from LSU, the cornerback. Uh, this is a good pairing here because you pair him up with big play Slay. Greedy Williams is the best corner in this draft. I think so. And he's going to be a Detroit Lion. I hope he will be a Detroit Lion because I think he's going to be really good there. He's going to really fit this game with Darius Slay and then uh, I think it's Quandre Diggs or Tease Tabor. That's who I'm thinking of from uh, Florida. He's really good. And if they can get him, maybe Darius Slay moves into the nickel and maybe that works out because Tabor is very tall, very lengthy. I think he's really good. He might even play the slot. But we're focusing on Greedy Williams here. Greedy Williams, long arms, aggressive, can really play that ball well. I think Detroit gets a real steal here at eighth. Number nine, what I think is the steal of the draft. Ed Oliver going number nine to the Buffalo Bills. Defensive tackle. They just lost Kyle Williams. And you go get what people are saying, a pro bowl D tackle already. Ed Oliver is very good. He's a good run stuffer. He's a okay pass rusher. But you pair him now with Harrison Phillips you got last year from Stanford and he's learned a little bit maybe have Kyle Williams come into Buffalo talk to the young guy Ed Oliver can be great and last year you also got Terrell Edmonds at linebacker you're building this defense now and become scary and you have Josh Allen who's developing you go get a receiver in the second round now you help out him you have Ruben you have Robert Foster excuse me and Zay Jones pair him with the number one maybe a J.J. Arcega white set, but that will come later. Uh, number 10, the final pick of this draft. Uh, we have the Denver Broncos taken. Drew Locke, quarterback, Missouri. They take a quarterback here in Drew Locke because they kind of need it. Case Keenum hasn't really worked out for them. We'll give Case Keenum one more year. That's that's what I'm thinking the Broncos will do and have Drew Locke play in the preseason, really develop under Case Keenum and just learn the ropes. Drew Locke, is, she's shown flashes of greatness. Yes, Missouri wasn't the greatest. Yes, they don't have the best pieces around him, but... I think, like, Cortland Sutton, Deshaun Hamilton, you get another wide receiver. Oh, uh, Tim Patrick, he looked pretty good. Tight ends, Troy Fumagalli, um, Jake Butt, and then offensive line's getting better. I think you could draft an offensive lineman, maybe even two in this draft, maybe a center, because I know Paradis is a uh, free agent soon. But that defense, you have Vic Fangio, now is your, de your, head, uh, your head coach. He's a old, gritty guy. And I think he's going to repair that defense and then help out his offense. Well, guys, that was the first part of my mock draft. Uh, link is in the description for part two and part three when those come out like comment subscribe hit that notification bell if you want to be part of the notification squad to see when i next upload which will probably be mock draft number two i mean mock draft part two and this has been circle two square and i'll see you in the next mock draft Whoa.